Space Rover, Episode 3, An Enki Ascertainment, Audio Version. The planet Jupiter, the giant of the solar system, is also well known for its wide variety of moons particularly those discovered by the famous astronomer Galileo Galilei. Not among these, however, is the moon Enenki, once anonymously known as Jupiter-13. It constitutes its own group of retrograde irregular moons. But other than that, it has not been considered of particular interest. Then again, that might also be because of what happened to those who, who did take an interest. For the moon does have an artificial dome, and it does have a terraform colony. Why then is it so eerily quiet? Why then is it littered with skulls? Entering Jovian orbit. Hello there, loyal listeners. I am Hologram. And I am here to say that a fun time always starts with a bottle of Jamtastic Space Ale. Ah, that pure, real taste that can only come from this healthy looking beverage. Hologram, what in Phobos are you sending over the communication system? I am plugging a non-existent product over the airways. May I ask, why? I am testing the power of suggestion. And to what end? I intend to encourage people to go to bars and liquor stores to ask for a non-existent drink. You're not answering my question. Why? I am hoping it will make the news. People trying to order a drink brand that doesn't exist. <sighs> Bored are you then? But need I remind you of the efforts you made to get off the news? That was you. I have no reason to hide. Well, as long as you are on my list of ONO. I've not much care to have my old war camp managers go after me. Was that a potential opener I heard? Can I just get rid of you? Easy as that. Not if you want shares in the Jamtastic Brewery Corporation. Is that Jupiter? Yep. We should be in orbit soon. Not more deliveries to Ganymede. It is the largest natural satellite in the solar system. That is exactly my point. It's not enough for them to be the richest people in the galaxy, but they have to live in the largest bloody moon. What on all the Galilean satellites are they compensating for? I don't think I'm going to answer that one. Anyways, we're not going to Ganymede. We're going to Ananki. Where the hell is Ananki? Just by asking that question, you are shown why we are going there. If you don't stop being so cryptic, I will. There. We are now in elliptic orbit around Jupiter. Also, if you don't stop making those stupid puns. Purely unintentional, I assure you. If you did not interrupt me in the first place, I'd have been done explaining this to you by now. Here, read this. It's from some sort of real estate company. Exactly. With more and more people leaving Earth, and with populations on telephone moons and planets rising, it's getting harder to find available land. And what exactly does this have to do with us? Apparently, there was one previously established colony on Ananki. It is our job to see what went wrong and find out if it's habitable again. What did you tell them, then? That you're a private detective? Fancy yourself to be Philip Marlowe, do you? Drinking too much and getting repeatedly knocked out by the butt of a gun? I'm sorry, Noir isn't you. Very funny. If you must know, they wanted someone of military experience. And thus, someone who could be trusted. And also someone who could be bought off cheap, I imagine. Well, I wasn't going to be the force to say it. You're the spine of a cockroach. That may or may not be, but considering how many times life has tried to break me, maybe lacking a spine is not such a bad thing. Well, call me when it all blows up in your face, as usual. I have better things to do. Some people just have no sense of ambition in their lives. Five minutes until docking at dome entry. Paying attention, Peter. I trust you more than that damn automated pilot. Oh, what? Sorry. I was just looking over the information that the real estate firm sent over. Don't worry, I'm not stupid enough to get hooked into some dumb deal. This is legit. I was more referring to the functional aspects. For example, what is the state of the colony? That's our job to find out. All right, then. I will just await future developments. Finally embracing a more laid-back state of life. It is far overdue. <laughs> Your investigation is to focus on... Peter! Okay, here we go. Whoa. 
What was that? You mean, what is it? I have merely activated the stabilizers. The guidance beam is still active. Well then, we know that some of the colony's support systems must still be working. Yes, but not without fault. If I insisted on perfection from these things, I would have sent this ship into the sun with both of you aboard and use the escape pod, which, in turn, probably would have also broken down. Warning. No mentory doors used shut. Collision imminent. Pity. No, but this thing does not even have an escape pod. The guidance beam is quite strong. I cannot break its grip. Well, get these doors to open somehow. What the hell is going on? Oh, the ship's painful sudden death. Triggers are active. It's not quite that bad. We are just about to engage in a forced entry docking. Um, that dome is built to hold an atmosphere, and this is a rusty old tin can. Quite, please. This will require some precision. Hole punching time. Well, you shot out a hole in the dome, but will we fit? We will fit precisely. I have calculated this down to nine decimal places. <sighs> what was that fine print again? The company is not liable for any injury, property damage, or freak accident that may befall any of our contractors doing their service for us. No compensation is offered. Alright, Peter. You win. Next time, you get to read the contract first. The guidance beam has switched itself off, and the breach is thankfully not large enough to significantly destabilize the atmosphere. So we should now be set to land on the surface and take a look. Goody goody. Welcome wasteland. Okay, everyone. We only have a very vague idea what it's like out there. Come. Prepared. Cuttingly ready, sir. Hey! You forgot to give me a weapon! I don't know. Just use ninja stealth or something. Uh, yes, um, well... hey Alright. Now that we're all armed and ready, let's go. Well, someone could definitely still live here. The dome does still seem fairly stable. Sure, but everything here is so dead and quiet. Hologram, mind that tree. Okay, maybe not completely dead. The question is then, with all these skulls lying around, what happened to all the animals? Or the people, for that matter. We cannot really answer that question until we know more about who the colonists were and why they came here. They must have left some trace of their existence somewhere. Agreed. We should all split up and look for any signs of human habitation. I will return back to the Oval and hoard down the fort. Contact me if you find anything. Freaking foliage! These collision detection arrows are bogus. After an all-night effort by police and local volunteers, little Timmy was successfully recovered from the well on Saturday morning by local SCWP officers. He is currently being held on charges of terrorism for his attempted poisoning of the town's water supply. In other news, no takers have yet been found to house thousands of animals displaced by the recent development plans of Forge Turf Limited to build new housing on a former natural park. In an unprecedented move Sunday, the government declared all previously titled natural parks to be open for human development, proclaiming it as a necessity for Earth's ever-growing population. Various naturalists and environmental activists have been petitioning landowners to give up their land for animal habitation. If no land can be found, all of the displaced animals will be put down by December of this year. If I wanted to hear something depressing, I wouldn't have turned on the evening news. All I wanted to hear was sordid sensationalism and how my friends are doing. Armed robbery. They've really outdone themselves this quarter. You might want to take a look at this. I am just north of your position. On my way.
You are telling me that you brought me out here just to look at another frickin' skull? Your exact words were, Contact me if you find anything. Do I need to explain to you again the nature of hyperbole? I am getting better, sir. I passed quite a few nice shiny boulders without further comment. They made you too damn patient, you know that. Actually, this is not my first skull, either. This place is littered with them. Oh? What are you thinking? All planets have a finite amount of resources, and thus a maximum carrying capacity. And, on a terraformed colony, the amount of resources is even further constrained. How would that generate a holocaust of skulls? I think that this might well have been a simple case of overpopulation. The animals bred themselves beyond the means of their ecosystem. Adapted as they were to be on a world of endless grassy hills, rich dense rainforests, and wide flowing rivers. Rather than several thousand kilometers of artificial scenery. Exactly. With your permission, sir, I would like to study the samples I collected thus far back in the rover, and see if I can work out any patterns with regards to population growth. All right. I suppose we should also recall hologram. After all, I don't want him shorting out after walking into any more trees. That in middle might be worth a few tales and resale, you know. And there seems to be an explosion in this artistic genre. Exploding? Hmm, sounds fun. Can I get into that? I am very much afraid that that was just an expression. Sorry to sedate your pyromania. Why was the radio set to a channel that talks about the arts? Let's tune into some real stuff. Do you mean current affairs, scientific analysis, philosophical dissertations? Are you nuts? I was talking about the new Interstellar Hard Rock Station. Well, if it's either of that or hear people talk about splattles they put on canvas, then I'm in. Agreed. Most statisticians and sociologists now agree that the series has reached a 100% penetration rate into mass culture. However, the new director is promising to bring the highly successful franchise to completely new audiences this spring. When asked on how this is to be done, he spoke of his ideas to broadcast reimagined episodes featuring random gibberish into the furthest reaches of space. He hopes that this would attract potential alien viewers. As well, in a more controversial move, he has approved an advertising campaign that targets the dead. Merchandising aimed at tombstones and grave plots is already starting to come out, but so far none of the deceased have been open to comment or review. Still, there have already been pre-orders reported. Hey, film news? Does that sound like the mule? Eel busting rock all the time? Don't you mean the mule? <laughs> Yeah, that's it. What do they do to it? Probably just yet another station rearrangement. But before you get too disappointed, the results from my full round of tests on those two skulls should be done shortly. You forget. I was raised with my various sensory organs tapped into several entertainment mediums at once. Give me either simulation or distraction, or I'll start going crazy. Well, I was going to go and try and find some more background on this place. The brief was, after all, quite brief. Apart from those absurdly plentiful disclaimers. Call them absurd if you wish, but otherwise I sure would want to sue. Not much presence in the Sabitha, I see. Page one and you're already mostly getting advertisements of something called Anenka Ada Massage. No, wait. Wait a second. Scroll back up. What? I just want to see what is under History of Our Brand. Probably a winding tale of trademark shuffling to avoid incarceration or litigation. Ahem. Double AM was founded by a grandchild of the founder of a group of free-thinking idealists a few years into the new century, who sought to construct an eco-haven colony on the Jovian satellite of Anenki. Eventually, a corporate sponsor stepped in and construction was hired out to a private company. The dome was built successfully, and a population of human, animal, and plant life was introduced. But... By the fifth year, things turned for the worse, and no word has come out of the colony since then. However, AAM still pledges to give you the very best in therapeutic... So there we have it. A colony built by a bunch of greenie weenies. Are we surprised that it all ended in tears? I am more interested in hearing about who the corporate donor was. It says on this considerably more safe for work website, 
that it was a land holding and tour company specializing in safaris, currently owned by Forge Turf. Evidently, they saw the animal haven as a ticket to bring in the crowds. Oh, look at the animals! What's this? A 500 tower entrance transportation and habitation fee? But those are so cute! Precisely. And it was not uncommon for such things to happen. After the Solar War, several large fortunes were made on war profiteering, and various spacefaring nations were eager to sell out parcels of land on the planets and satellites to recuperate expenses and fill up the newly established Commonwealth Treasury. All of very little oversight or regulation, of course. And now they are doing it all over again with this massive real estate grab. All the more reason for us to provide a warning based on what happened here. Are those tests done yet? Or is it back to the radio? Yeah, because I was kind of interested by that reported turn of events. As for weeks, I'd been hearing that he was going to target zygotes and embryos rather than corpses. Though I suppose the audience did not prove too captivated during product testing and did not have testaments to potentially grade from for quick cash. Though it is debatable which is the faster-growing demographic. To think that people are getting good money to study that. And they call me a crook. No matter. That must be the notification of completion. Hmm. That is odd. What? What is it? While the calculations do seem to show a fairly large population based on the amount of skulls I recorded, it does not appear to fit the pattern of typical population explosion and successive die-off. How so? In such a scenario, each succeeding generation breeds out more and more. Then, finally, there is a plague, or a famine, that cuts back the numbers during a single generation. Yes, and? I did not find much indication of large, healthy populations ever. Both the main skull samples I brought back to the rover, for example, died before reaching reproductive maturity, although the two samples are from two completely different generations. If they were dying before being able to breed, how could their numbers rise? Perhaps you are wrong about them being a large population, and what we have actually discovered is an above-average rate of infant and child mortality. Yes, it's always the same with those damn kids. Little thugs get unruly and stop forming gangs. And before you know it, there are piles of bodies in the streets. Where in Jupiter did that outburst come from? They took children on field trips to the war camp, and they did unspeakable things. Still, that seemed a bit extreme, even for you. Come and have a look for yourself, then. Holographic transmitter opacity at 50%. Jeez, are those teeth marks in your outer or middle casing? Yeah, pause. All right, point withdrawn. Back on point. What should our move be now? Well, more tests, I suppose. Are we capable of performing a genetic cross-comparison? Well, not legally, but I could pirate the needed firmware, or else pay the 900 Terras. All right, you may proceed. It's all in the name of science, after all. Oh yes, absolutely. And if you can just so happen to get a copy of the new Blast Monster 2100 game crack as well, that would be just lovely. The download has started, but it will take a bit of time, I'm afraid. There are no sub-ether repeaters on this side of Jupiter, and so the signal is fairly weak. Hmm. Well, as long as it's done before the dawn of 2140, if we don't show up with something by the end of the day, they'll probably lower my commission, knowing that contract anyway. Um, sir, you do realize that 2140 is in the past, don't you? It is 2143 already. Yeah, that can only mean you're either suggesting we somehow recreate conditions for backwards time travel, or wrap ourselves around an object with a certain gravity and so accelerate the passage of time on the assumption that our chronology is either cyclical or the less likely chance that there will be a big crunch and will arrive eventually at 2140 whilst time would be reversing. Yep, you're either a visionary, insane, or just an idiot. Guess which gets my vote. Either way, it does not seem like sane scheduling to me, if you'll pardon that. Slip a sudden digit and you'll leap all over me. Yep, that is why we will get Peter to oversee the genetic tests. With you at the helm, we could probably get a sample of cat hair and have it misidentify as a pterodactyl. Lay off, chew toy. I will have you know that I... You were saying... What the... 
Okay, what is going on? That sound is getting irritating now. I have no idea what you are talking about. Very funny. If you cannot take a simple joke, perhaps we should go out and look for more samples. And so, our heroic trio ventured boldly on. Wait a moment. What? We are supposed to be heading north. This is south. We already came down this way earlier. Damn it, alright. Let's go. What is that? What now? Is there something in that tree? Hey, he is right. Look up there. Hmm, cannot reach. I guess I'll have to climb up there and get it. There! Got it! See? Sometimes it pays to have grabbing appendages. Tell me, does it ever pay to have four? Or sixteen? I don't know. Let's find out. A middle torso mode dash 43. Really? You gave me 40 of them? I look like Da Vinci's Vitruvian man on growth hormone. You did ask. Fine. How about we amputate 39 of them? You never use the other one anyway. Well, maybe if I had 40 other types of appendage to match. Meanwhile, back on planet Sanity, what you brought down appears to be some sort of transmitting device. Lucky find. I think this shows the wisdom of looking around and observing rather than merely marching around in a straight line all the time. You've never done the common training on, have you? I had to do it to force get my military pilot's license. For some reason, flying never came into it, just walking in circles as barked by the drill sergeant. Erosion from successive cadets must have worn down that hill into a deep pit by now. Well, what is that thing even for, exactly? Ah, a good old-fashioned GPS position beacon. This is good news. We should be able to find whatever remains of the settlement by following the direction it sends its signals back towards. Which way do we go, then? That way. Oh, pardon me, again. I meant that way. So, hologram. Maybe it was a pterodactyl after all. Well, excuse me for putting my faith in somebody for once. Well, here we are. This looks like the settlement. Anybody home? Yep, but he does not seem too chatty at the moment. Hmm. Yet more skulls. A bovine cranium. They must have been collecting them. Do you think they were trying to find out what was happening to all the animals? That seems probable. Let's look around a bit more. The analysis should be done soon. Alright, but I'm not too sure about wandering through the Citadel of the Dead. Ooh, you big baby. We can go into all the dark spooky buildings first, if you like. <sighs> This appears to be it. Please print, computer. <sighs> this damn shit will be pretty embarrassing at times. Da da da, alleles, double helix, recessive, who's he, what's it? Da da da. Take a look at this, sir. I am no geneticist. What were you expecting me to... Oh. What is it? The computer did not fashion it into a middle finger, did it? Again. Not exactly, but I would like to confirm that this is not a computer at all. These two samples were many kilometers and a rather wide gulch apart. And yet their genotypes are almost a complete and total match. So either the computer accidentally printed only one half of the results twice... Or we just uncovered the royal beaver family of Anenki, keeping the bloodline pure. A physiological scan of the samples also compared them to an Earth sample, and found a few particularly emphasized developments in the Anenki batch. An overly sloped forehead, for example, and larger, pointier ears. This appears to be a case of inbreeding. All of this walk just to find a case of the Foundor effect. This does sound like a fairly simple case for them to express shock and doubt over. Yeah, just a group of naive people buying into the idea of Noah's Ark. Two by two indeed. It is certainly a working theory. 
But in that case, what happened to the human population? Presumably a simple case of cousin loving. That is pushing it. Humans would not have vanished in only five years due to that. I mean, have you ever seen the people on Pluto? They barely have more than 12 genes between them. Yes, they do seem to have a rather short supply of blue genes, at least ones that actually cover what they're supposed to cover. There is one possibility, but it is fairly ghastly. What? The animals in their dying desperation overthrew and murdered their masters? Dramatic, but not what had come to mind. Maybe not quite so ghastly. What is it then? What did happen? Not only does a limited genetic pool compound the incidence of congenital disorders, it also rapidly depletes a species' resistance to disease. The viruses and bacteria that would have inevitably accompanied the people and animals would have had an easy picking, with the narrow aim of natural selection accelerating their rate of mutation as well. I see, but surely they would have evacuated the colony. As far as we know, they just stopped talking after five years, and now here we are. Although becoming increasingly common, the spread of the ion drive was slow in the immediate aftermath of the Lunar Conference. It would thus have been quite expensive to evacuate even a colony of this limited size. Ganymede and the other early Jovian colonies would not have been able to support such a massive influx, and so they would have needed to be moved back to Mars or even Earth. But still, just leaving them all to die with our animals from a plague? It should not really be all that hard to contemplate. How many companies have cared when their products were poisoning millions? When their practices were dispossessing thousands? Their investment quickly curdled. So they probably just decided to let the colonists sort themselves out. The Commonwealth Health Service was in its infancy, and these new colonization projects were not really monitored. And now they hire us to give them the all clear to go about it all over again. They certainly will not listen. Even if they are a bit wiser this time, they will still abuse their privilege. So much power over an entire moon controlled by greed alone. Well, yes, but what am I supposed to do? If I refuse to tell them anything, I would not receive my commission due to a breach of contract. We all have to eat. We all need fuel. A moral conundrum that has rung throughout the ages. What is an acceptable way to make a living? At what point is it no longer, I was just following orders, or observing my contract? Peter, turn on the radio, please. A little light entertainment while I think this all over. Welcome to Big Mash Scandals Hour, or the best leaves uncovered by our experienced team of journalists and busybodies, giving you all the juiciest tales of the day. Ooh, what is it this week? Gratuitous sex? Senseless violence? Or just plain old stupidity? Often in these situations, the three tend to go together. Shh, I'm trying to listen. And remember that you too can be a crusader for the freedom of information. Got someone else's dirty laundry you'd like to ail? Well, get in touch and get a few extra towers in your pocket. Did you hear that? Well, yes. A rather dishonorable suggestion, I thought. True, but it's also a potential ticket to a clear conscience and a still generous commission. If I break my contract, I'll not be paid, but it will get me out of the NDA. Well, and free us from several other severe and odious fine print clauses, yes. Did you know that strictly speaking we're not even supposed to be wearing shoes? That number again is 834-3473. Call now! You know, that reporter sounded rather familiar. You heard the man, Peter. Punch that number up. For the last time, Peter, not so damn little. The chassis can't take it. Hello, Big Mash Network. Terry speaking. Does he ever turn that voice off? Hello, we have a submission for Scandal Owl. Do you take old skeletons in the closet? Or beneath a decaying atmospheric dome, for that matter. Why, yes, we... Hey, wait a second, was that you? Who? Little old me? Oh, God, not you lot again. You're not after more money, are you? Well, yes. Why else would he call you? Oh, wait, you meant blackmail. Well, then, no. Relax, Terry. We only after what we will be due. Pour your usual rates for submission. So you're not going to bring up the, uh, exaggerated calamities thing again? 
No, it is preventing the repeating of a real calamity that interests us. <sighs> Alright, lay it on me then. We'll see if this is anything good. Well, it all started around 30 years ago. And thus, the colony fell as completely as old Rome, all thanks to what became Forge Torth Limited. Quite funny how they did not mention that when tendering those new real estate and development contracts with the space coming off government, don't you find? Indeed, an amazing story to be sure. It has something for the whole family. Cute animals, human interests, deadly diseases, and an untimely apocalypse. This is exactly what we needed to liven up what has otherwise been a fairly boring week. Seriously, we are down to a story on android exhibitionism. It seems that some of them are refusing to put on their cases. They say their cooling fans don't work right, and they thus need the additional ventilation. I think they all are just perverts. Or both. Either way, sounds pretty hot to me. I apologize. Sorry. Okay, all that being so, I'm expecting a fairly generous payment for all this. Um, yeah, right. I already know your story now, and you do realize there would be your world against ours in an open court, right? Nothing is signed on paper, after all. I could have expected as much. I am sure you pull that trick on all your sources. Hologram, if you will do the honors. Alright, alright, you win. It's true. We've been artificially creating disasters for years to bring up the ratings. Fine, 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 fine. I've heard that one more than enough. Expect your account to be generously embellished, again. You goddamn blackmailers and vile extortionists! Just one crook to another, and I am at least a fairly honest one. Well, yeah, but with that attitude, you would not survive a day in the media. Farewell, unless there was any other piece of corporate property you're after. Want a brunted mug? Jeez! I think not. I need to leave your company intact if I'm going to enjoy tomorrow's show. Your summing up was a bit off, sir. Rome didn't exactly fall as dramatically as people claim. Oh? What do you mean? After the Empire reached its zenith in size, it was broken up into two allied states, Eastern and Western Roman Empires, in order to run it more efficiently in an age of corruption and decline. And one fell and the other didn't? Exactly. The Western Roman Empire, with Rome as its capital, collapsed under subsequent barbarian raids. The Eastern Empire, based at Constantinople, modern Istanbul, or is it Constantinople again? Either way, it lasted well into the Middle Ages. How come I never heard of this? Oh, timey expression supposed to be all truthful. Next you'll be telling me a baker's dozen is not actually twelve, or that two by fours are not eight times the width, or that the rule of three makes for terrible comedy. You might have heard of it, in fact but under the name of the Byzantine Empire. Byzantium being the original name for Istanbul slash Constantinople slash that place with all the names, it lasted with legacy Roman political structures, such as its own Senate, until the Ottoman Turks finally conquered the empire and ultimately, after centuries of siege, took Constantinople. And a big-ass cannon. Seriously, look it up. Not that I really care or anything. Eh, let him rant. I might just bore anyone who might possibly be listening. Listening to us? That is rather paranoid of you, isn't it, sir? In a universe of Big Mash and Forge Torf, you can never be too careful. So then, don't you think we should be getting out of here? I'd not really want Forge Torf to know where we are when the scandal owl ails tomorrow afternoon. Probably a good idea. Peter, pick a moon. A nicer one than this one, of course. All right, just processing through the options. Okay. THE moon. Wow, that was an amazing show of raw creativity. Have a cookie. Well, that is an honest probability algorithm for you. Three, two, three, 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 six, point three, three. Please stop. Eh, yeah, but why not go to the moon anyway? Let's go somewhere a long time settled, with no end of genetic variety. Why? Hoping to woo a woman with your newfound awnings? Spread your genes? You never know. Besides, someone needs to spread the alleles expressed through integrity. And the spine of a cockroach, remember? Flexibility is a good trait in any bloodline. Speaking of which, don't your parents live on the moon? Yes, but that would ruin the fun now, wouldn't it? Oh, but why? You've been a good boy, for once. 
Exactly, and I do not want to be one for long. Full steam ahead, Mr. Gansley. Aye, aye, sir. Just let me recheck the dimensions of the hole in the roof. Given my decimals might just be a touch uninspired at the moment. Representatives from Forge Chores Limited have thus far declined to comment on his progenitor's alleged role in the extinction of the Anenki colony. But, as always here on Scandal Owl, we let the mob, ooh, uh, I mean, uh, the public, come to their own conclusions. Have a nice day, and just watch out, or else you might just be on here next time. But don't let that stop you. Ah, uh, that was a good solid hour's entertainment, though. Stay tuned, it gets better. In addition, we have received a tape from an android proclaiming it to be a dissertation on the fall of Rome. Given we are state mandated to have four hours of educational content a month, we are unfortunately inclined to play it. Sorry, everyone. After the Empire reached its zenith in size, it was broken up into two allied states. Mm, disappointed by your public reception? Rather, I did try and spruce it up a bit, even including random vulgarities, as that seems to attract the attention of your kind a bit more than dates and figures. Those damn Byzantines. Rule under them was hell sometimes. Indeed. Well, what cheer you up? Take us down to the surface. It's been ages since I last ate at the Lunar Cheese Emporium. And no more skulls to boot. You would think that would rather depend on the molds used in making the cheese. Eye socket and nasal passage Swiss? Yum, yum. Swiss people? Hmm. Well, I suppose cannibalism fits the theme. Neither of you are going to be the one to eat it. So relax already. This next hour of broadcasting brought to you by... Jabtastic Space Ale! See? I can get that reporter to do anything now. This resulted in the collapse of Forge Turf's bid on the Nanki colony amid much controversy. In response to intense public pressure from all corners, the Commonwealth government officially announced a redesign of its Ananke development plans. The announcement detailed the creation of an off-world natural park for the thousands of animals displaced by Forge Turf's previous projects. Surveying of the colony is underway. There are reports that the survey is being conducted by the same anonymous whistleblower who first broke the scandal. What do you mean it's our job to pick up all these stalls? Captain James and Terry the Journalist were played by Hamish Wilson. Malcolm Wilson played Peter Gansley and the narrator, while Graham Wilson played Hologram and the radio announcers. The first newscaster was played by Samantha Hewitt. The entertainment reporter and the second newscaster were played by Laura Warman. The head writer was Graham Wilson, with Hamish Wilson as head editor and Malcolm Wilson as director. The series was written using LibreOffice Writer, and the music, audio effects, and general editing were completed by Malcolm Wilson using Audacity. Space Rover is a Fedora and Arch Linux powered project, hosted by Eculus.org, mirrored on the Internet Archive and YouTube, while distributed in free and non patented OTG Verbis and FLAC formats. Special thanks to Grant Naylor Productions and Douglas Adams for the series inspiration, as well as a venerable Land Rover car manufacturer. Copyright 2013 through 2017, Malcolm Wilson Multimedia. Dual licensed under the GFDL and CCBYSA copyless. Usage attributions available on the Space Rover website at http colon slash slash ICCULUS dot ORG slash MWM slash ROVER.